gotta get myself refreshed before we hop into this hot tea. Welcome makeup loving friends. Today we have some unpopular makeup opinions to talk about. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. If this is your first time to my channel, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Emily, and as I said, we are going to be talking some very unpopular makeup opinions. So recently I saw Tati Westbrook from Glam Life Guru do this on her channel, and she actually got the idea from Angelica Nyquist here on YouTube. She's a part of the smaller beauty community, if you will, and I freaking love her. She started this tag, I believe, in summer, and I meant to do it then, but I was being totally lazy, if we're being honest here. And then when I watched Tati's video on this topic, I was re-inspired to bring you guys this video and this is the unpopular makeup opinions tag so obviously these are going to be some unpopular opinions that's the whole point of this tag is to talk about things that some people might not actually agree with so if I happen to mention products that you personally like or you don't like or people that you like and I say that I don't like them it is in no way hate towards you I love you okay I do not dislike you I just dislike certain makeup products because they don't all work for me but disclaimer aside let's go ahead and jump right on into the hot and spicy unpopular opinions so the first question in this tag is popular makeup product that you don't like and I already know that I'm gonna piss a bunch of people off by saying this so I expect to see a few down votes with the answer to this question but personally I do not like NARS blushes I know I know it's freaking insane right because everyone loves them NARS blushes are people's staple blushes but for some reason I'm just not drawn to them I own a NARS blush palette I own two of these single blushes and I'm just not too crazy about them now I know that NARS blushes are supposed to be buildable and they are a bit more on the sheer side but they're supposed to build up on itself to get more of a pigmented application and I personally like a pigmented blush obviously I personally like having the clown cheek effect but I don't really feel like I can get to that clown cheek effect if you will or just a really pigmented like strong and out there blush with an NARS blush. I always feel like I have to reach for another blush to kind of layer over top of it and although I do like some of the colors that I have of my NARS blushes, I just don't really find myself reaching for them. I want to reach for them but every time I do I end up grabbing for something else. So I think I've come to the conclusion here that I just simply don't really like NARS blushes and I want to because everyone loves them and I don't know I just I want to I want to be a part of the club but I just, I can't fake it. I was just never meant to join the NARS Blush Club, I suppose. So the second question of this tag is popular makeup product or brand everyone seems to hate but you love. And I knew immediately when I read this question of what I was gonna talk about. Every time a palette comes out or a new makeup launch comes out that involves eyeshadows, everyone always loves the metallics, the shimmers, everyone's drawn towards the mattes, of course. But when there's one specific kind of eyeshadow in a palette, people seem to just go nuts over it in a bad way. And that formula of eyeshadow is the glue glitter topper eyeshadow. I know, I know, there's probably a few shock faces watching this, but I absolutely love glitter topper eyeshadows. I know when people want to use glitter, they typically reach for the Stila glitter and glows or a liquid kind of glittery shadow like that or they reach for just straight up glitter because you can get more of a pigmented application doing it those ways. And going the liquid glitter route like the Stila products are an easier version to get that look. But if you're wanting to go for something that's really intense on the eyes, then you just go for regular glitter because you're gonna get that extreme payoff and that extreme shine, of course. But lately, over the past couple months, I have been just loving glitter topper eyeshadows. Now, I know that a lot of people complain about them because they're hard to pick up on a brush, but I personally just use my finger and then I'll go in with the brush and kind of patch up anywhere that I need to and yeah I'll admit it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to use them and it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get them onto your brush but if you just use your finger it works pretty decently and then kind of finessing the product into the spots that you weren't able to get with your finger isn't too hard because you're not having to get a whole entire eyelid surface area now the reason why I love glitter topper eyeshadows versus choosing something that's a little bit easier to apply such as the Stila glitter and glows or liquid glitter shadows in general or just going for straight up glitter is because I feel like glitter topper eyeshadows give you a really nice subtle amount of sparkle that really show up but they're not too overwhelming and when you use glitter topper pressed in the pan type eyeshadows you're not ever gonna get something that's crackly on the eyes like you would with a liquid shadow I personally have found that when I use the Stila glitter and glows my eyes end up looking as dry as the Sahara Desert even if I put on just a little light application and kind of pat it out it will look dry no matter what I do now they do look sparkly and they do look glittery but they look very dry and 
creepy and I'm not I'm not so about that life I'm not trying to make myself look 10 years older I personally am not the biggest fan of loose products so reaching for glitter all the time when I want glitter isn't really that great of an option for me because I get it literally everywhere it is a huge mess and it ends up not being worth it honestly I have personally been loving using glitter toppers as a one eyeshadow look I just dip my finger in the pan press it onto my eyes and run out the door and I'm done and I still have something that's really glam and fun and will sparkle when I'm out in the sun but it didn't really take me that much effort I always make sure to use a glitter glue though no matter what I am doing but literally I do that with almost any shadow whether it's a shimmer a metallic the only thing that I don't use glitter glue with is of course matte so the next question in the tag is makeup collab you didn't like or were not interested in and I know this one might get a little bit of heat and a little bit of a I don't know people being mad but this is to be said with no disregard to the person who did the collab. I freaking love her and she is absolutely phenomenal and talented at makeup. She's one of the most talented in the industry. So she is doing good for herself and I don't have any bad feelings against her. But this is the Too Faced and Nikki's Tutorials Power of Makeup collab. Now, I actually have a different reason than most people do for not wanting to purchase this and not being interested in it. I believe this came out in 2016, like summer of 2016. And when I first saw it, I immediately thought of a palette that I already had in my collection that I had purchased just a few months prior from Too Faced. It was the Too Faced Holiday 2015 palette. I believe the palette was the Petite France palette or the Petite Paris palette. I'm not 100% sure, but when I first saw the Power of Makeup collab, um, I literally went and grabbed my palette and compared shades and I was like, this is from this, this is from this, this matches up with this. To me, and from what I've seen, there are so many very similar, if not the same shades from that palette that went into the Power of Makeup palette. And from what I can tell from the reviews I've watched and whatnot, the Power of Makeup palette didn't perform the best for some people. Some people loved it, but some people got maybe a bad batch or something. But the purple shade and the blue shade that were in the palette were performing pretty poorly for most people, allegedly. This is all what I've heard. This is all hearsay from YouTube. My personal experience with the Too Faced Petite Paris palette from 2015 was that the teal and the purple in that palette was about the same as the one in the Nikki Tutorials palette. So I'm really curious to know if they just had to pick out some colors she liked and then put it in that palette or if she actually came up with like new colors herself. I'm not trying to spill any tea here and be too shady and diss her in any way. I'm just like literally confused and I've never heard anyone talk about this on YouTube before. So I'm not sure if people just skipped over the Too Faced Holiday 2015 palette or what. I don't know, but when I saw the Nikki Tutorials power makeup palette my mind went straight for the Too Faced one so at number four in the tag is popular makeup step that you never do now many of you guys already know this but some of you may not and I do not wear foundation or put translucent powder all over my face now I do bake under my eyes because I do use concealer and I put concealer on my nose to kind of help aid the contour if you will but as far as foundation goes I've actually never worn it and I've talked about this before but I have this weird phobia of having like liquid creamy products on my face unless it's like a really light cream blush that I can tap out with my finger and basically get rid of most of the product. But when it comes to foundation, the idea of it like terrifies me and I feel like it's gonna clog my pores and I don't know, I just get anxiety about putting like something liquidy and heavy on my face. But then again, I've never worn foundation so I really don't know what it feels like. But I don't wear it, so that's something that almost everyone does that I don't do and have never done. And I don't have a reason to set my face with any translucent powder because I don't wear foundation. So they go hand in hand. So moving on to number five, popular beauty influencer you don't watch or are subscribed to. So I used to be subscribed to all of the big guys up at the top. And then of course everyone found out all this information about all of them. So I unsubscribed from literally all of them. So I can tell you which ones I am subscribed to because I think that would give you a bit more of a look into what kind of people I want to watch and what kind of beauty influencers I keep up with. The only big influencers or beauty YouTubers that I watch that are like over a million subscribers are Tati, obviously, I mentioned her earlier, and Shan XO. And personally, I know people have had issues with Tati, and Tati can get a little bit kind of controversial sometimes, but I love her and I think she's a sweetheart. I've watched her for years and something about her just makes me feel nostalgic, so I love Tati. And I watch Shan XO, even though she does do PR unboxings and stuff that I don't personally like, I just don't watch those. I watch her for her creativeness in her makeup tutorials, and I like her personality as well. I don't think that she has a mean bone in her body, and personally, I've never seen her do anything to jeopardize her name and I've never really seen anyone talk about her in that bad of a way or say that she's not the way that she is on camera 
but yeah, those are the only two big beauty influencers that I follow. The rest of them, honestly, I can do without. So number six is popular makeup product or brand you do not use anymore. This is another product that is a lot of people's holy grail, so I can see the dislikes flying at me already. But I do not use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance at all anymore. Now, I used that palette for about a year. I literally got it during the first launch in summer of 2016, and I used it all the time. But I grew out of those colors. And you know, you might look at that and think, well, you have pink in there, you have some brighter colors, and you have neutrals. But honestly, I feel like all of the colors that are in that palette are so muted. My personal makeup style right now and just what I've been into and just my latest makeup phase has been all about color and bright eyeshadow. Something that's gonna grab your attention and make you question, is she going for the clown look or is she going for like the colorful glam look? But although I had a really nice, about a year long run with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, I do not touch it at all anymore and I don't really foresee myself touching it at all in the future. I'm sorry, Modern Renaissance. So at number seven in the tag is makeup trend that you have no interest in trying. Now, I didn't really know how to answer this question because I, don't, I feel like I don't really keep up with the makeup trends that much. I mean, I kind of know, but because I don't watch the really big influencers and I don't really follow that many makeup accounts on Instagram, like honestly, if you're ever bored and you want to know what kind of people I follow and you're just feeling like being in a snoopy kind of mood, look at the people that I follow on Instagram because I would say that about 75 to 80 percent of the people that i follow on my instagram are all animal accounts and pet accounts because i love pets and animals and cats but anyway um yeah i don't really keep up with the trends that much let's be honest here i'm kind of out of touch with everything so my answer to this question is super over the top instagram makeup tutorials now i know this is kind of a thing of the past but we still see it all the time when we go to instagram when i go to my explore feed i am still seeing people like doing the craziest stuff and making the craziest faces to get the clicks and whatnot and i just could I couldn't really see myself ever doing that. I'm not out there enough to make something like that. I'm kind of an introvert. I'm kind of antisocial. So I don't think that I could ever make something that's so over the top like that. And I know why they make it over the top. It's because they want people to click on it. And most of the time, those are paid promotions. Those videos are most of the time Instagram ads and the influencers getting paid to talk about a product and to show a product. And they want people to click on it because they'll make more coin. But I don't know, I just don't have it in me to do that. So that's something that I couldn't really ever see myself doing. And finally, the last question of this tag is makeup product that was better in theory than when you used it. Now, I had to think about this one because I feel like there was a lot that kind of popped up in my head, but there was one product in particular that I thought about that uh, it did not work for me when I used it. And that is Baked Gelee blushes. In particular, the Laura Geller Baked Gelee blush in the shade Cantaloupe. These blushes are so intriguing they look so beautiful they look like a little ice cream swirl they make me think of like melon sorbet and i get hungry looking at these they are so cute and so i went out and bought a few of them and none of them worked out for me even in the slightest and i know that you are supposed to be able to pick this up with a stiffer brush and it will apply to your cheeks nicely but i swear i have tried every single type of brush you could try with this product a stiff brush a flimsy brush a freaking highlighter brush i tried everything and i could not get it to translate onto my cheeks i even tried picking it up with my finger and patting it onto my cheeks like I would with a cream blush and nothing it didn't show up it didn't show up at all I felt like I wasted a bunch of money and I was really disappointed because I like these products in theory I like the aesthetic of them and I like the idea of it and I like the colors of them but they just did not work out for me so I am not going to be going anywhere near baked gelee blushes for a very long time but we have made it to the end of the tag I just really feel like some of my makeup opinions are going to piss people off and I'm sorry if they do but this is just how I feel and I can't lie about it. But I am so curious to know what your guys' unpopular makeup opinions are. If you've done a video like this on your channel and you have a YouTube channel, go ahead and let me know down below and comment because I would absolutely love to watch it. I think it's so fun to listen to people's unpopular makeup opinions and just be unfiltered about how they feel about things. And please do let me know what are some of your unpopular makeup opinions because as I just said, I love hearing about them. You guys can always let me know your unpopular or unfiltered opinions. You know, this is a judgment-free zone. We're not gonna judge you. You're safe here. But with that being said, I do hope that you consider subscribing if you have not already. I am doing all sorts of makeup goodness happening here on this channel. So if you are not already subscribed and you would like to be, I would love to see you hit that button down below. I do also hope that you consider giving this video a big old thumbs up and turning the notification bell on if you enjoyed it and you would like to see more from me. But I hope that you are having an absolutely amazing and beautiful day wherever you are. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye!